this is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create these isometric carved letters using Inkscape. And if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out the Inkscape Masterclass, which is a collection of over 50 videos where I go over every single tool and feature in Inkscape, and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check that out. So let's go ahead and get started here in Inkscape. The first thing we want to do is set up our documents so that we're all working with this, uh, a similar view. I'm going to come up here to where it says view, uh, make sure you have custom selected and then I'm going to go to zoom and I'm going to zoom in at one to one and then I'll open up the uh, the alignment menu with this button right here. Uh, make sure you have last selected from this drop down and then I'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients and stroke menu with that button right there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some text on the canvas here. I'm going to grab the text tool. I'm going to click on the canvas till we get the blinking cursor and I'm just going to write in all caps the word text just for the sake of this tutorial. And the fonts we want to use, we want to use a nice square font. The font that I recommend using is called 8-bit. Uh, I'll open it up here. I'm going to click on the text editor. Grab this window. I'm going to look for 8-bit wonder is what it's called. Uh, if you don't have this font installed, I'll put a link in the description uh, to where you can download this font. So you just go ahead and download and install that, then restart Inkscape. So I'm going to set that, hit apply, grab the select tool. I'm going to hold control and shift and just scale this up a little bit like that. And what I want to do now is actually, let me just make that a little bigger. What I want to do now is take this text and convert it from a text object to just a plain old path. So I'll go to path, object to path, and then I'll click the ungroup button right here where it says ungroup selected objects. Click on that so that they're individual letters. And now I'm just going to make these a different color and a different um, opacity because we're going to be creating things on top of them and we're going to want to be able to see the contrast between the, the things we're drawing and the text itself. So I'm going to make that green. I'm going to come over here to where it says opacity. I'm just going to bring it down to roughly in half like that. And now I'm going to change the position of this text. As you can see right now, I have everything selected with the select tool. If I click on this again, these arrows are going to change into rotation and shearing handles. And once we've done that, I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and take this top middle arrow right here, the shearing arrow, and then just bring it one step to the left like that while holding control. So it shears it to the left one step. And then again, I'm going to hold control, grab this bottom corner arrow right here and ro rotate this counterclockwise one, two, two steps just like that. And then I'll just click off of the canvas to deselect everything. So what I want to do now is I want to come up here to where it says uh, enable snapping. I want to make sure that's turned on and I want to turn on some of these snapping options. First of all, I want this one right here where it says snap to paths. We want that enabled. And then right here we want uh, snap cusp nodes, including rectangle corners. We want that enabled as well. And then finally, the one right next to it that says snap smooth nodes. We want that enabled as well. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start drawing um, shapes on top of these letters to give it the uh, the illusion of depth as if it were carved into the surface. So let me zoom in on this letter T right here. I'm going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel a, f uh, a few times to zoom in like that. And if you want to move around, you can just press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse like that. And then I'm going to grab the, uh, the Bezier pen, uh, which is over here. Or you could press B on the keyboard. That's the keyboard shortcut. And what I'm going to do is Everywhere you see a corner, I'm going to click to that corner and then hold control and bring the line straight down to create a, uh, a vertical line going straight down. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to start right here with this top corner. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to hold control and I'm going to bring this line straight down until it snaps to the bottom edge of the letter T. Go ahead and click. Now I can let go of control and bring this back to the corner over here and then back to the start like that. So that we end up with this little shape right here. And I'm going to make that a medium shade of gray like that and I'm going to get rid of the black outline or the stroke by holding shift and clicking on this red X over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw another shape going the other way. Again, starting with this corner, hold control, bring it straight down like that over here to this corner. And now that we're at a corner, we're going to go straight down. So I'm going to hold control and go straight down like that. Snap to the edge of the, uh, the letter T right there over to this corner, over to this corner this corner and then back to the starting point. And now I'm going to make this a different, maybe like a darker shade of gray. I'm going to go something like this over here. And then again, I'm going to hold shift and click on the red X to get rid of that outline. And as you can see here, we're starting, uh, we have the beginning of um, the appearance as if it's cut into the surface here. I'm going to do this one more time over here to this. I'm going to fill in this shape right here. I'm going to click right here, snap to that corner, bring this down here, snap to that corner over here, over here 
and over here. And I want to make this the same shade of gray that this light shade is. I'm going to grab the dropper to do that. The dropper tool is over here, but for this tutorial, you're going to be going back and forth between the dropper and the pet and the Bezier pen a lot. So I would recommend using the keyboard shortcuts because it'll save you a lot of time. I'm just going to press D on the keyboard to grab the dropper. I'm going to make that that lighter shade of gray. And then again, I'm going to get rid of that outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. And now we can go back to the Bezier pen by pressing B. So we're going back and forth the entire time between B and D, B and D, B, D, dropper, Bezier pen. You get the idea. Now, the, the way that I'm coloring these shapes in is every shape, let me show you as an example here, every shape where the top of the shape is going at this down to the right angle is going to be the lighter shade of gray. And every shape where the top of the shape is going to this bottom left angle is going to be the darker shade. And you're going to notice that's going to be consistently the case throughout the rest of the letters here. So let me go and create some more objects here to show you what I mean. Just like I did with the T, I'm going to start right here, bring that straight down back to the starting point. And since the top angle is going down to the right, I'm going to color it in with the same color that I used for the other shapes that at the top are also going down to the right. So I'm going to grab the dropper, fill that in, get rid of the, uh, the stroke information there, and I'm going to create another shape through here like that. Let me do that. Click that there, back up there, and then back to the starting point. And again, I want to color this in. This shape, the top of this shape, is going down to the left. So I'm going to use the darker shade of gray. And then again, like I mentioned before, we're starting at the corners. or We're creating these shapes based on where the corners are. So I'm going to go back to the Bezier pen. We have a corner right here. I'm going to Start right here, go straight down, over here, over here, back to the starting point. And again, this top angle is going down to the right, so I'm going to match it up with the color from the other objects that are going down to the right. I'm going to create another shape right here, like that. Same color, get rid of this stroke. Come over here, same thing. Bring this straight down. Since we're touching a corner right there, we got to go straight down, all the way down, like that. This may take a little bit of practice to like visualize how it's supposed to, where the where the the lines and the shapes are supposed to go. But it's it's not as difficult as it seems. Once you get the hang of it, it's actually quite easy. Start one right here, over here. Snap to that corner. Back to this corner, and then back to this corner. And I'm going to fill that in as well. So let me just do this final shape over here. Uh, we've got a corner up here. I want to bring that straight down. And when I say choose the points where there's corners, we're talking about like the top of the shape. Obviously, if there's a corner right here, you can't bring a shape going straight down from there because that's going outside of the letter. That wouldn't exactly work. So you kind of have to choose these based on where, uh, based on the shape of the letter itself. Just connect that back to the starting point. And if you zoom out, you can see it's it's starting to it's really starting to take form there. It looks like it's cut into the surface there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go through and finish up the rest of this uh, these letters here, and I'll go ahead and fast forward so you don't have to sit here and watch me do that. And then I'll catch up with you when I'm done. Okay, one more thing I wanted to point out is that if you have, if you're working with a, a word where you have multiples of the same letter, like you see here, I have two letter T's here, you don't have to actually go and rec recreate all those shapes. You could actually just take the shapes and just duplicate it over. I'm going to take this shape right here. I'm going to hit Control D on the keyboard to duplicate that and then just snap that into the corner. I'll do the same thing over here with these shapes. Just hit Control D, grab a copy of it, and snap it into the corner there. And finally, what I want to do now is if you notice a little bit of that, was that the green shape is showing through the background there. So I'm going to click on the object and then I'm going to hold Alt and click on it again so it grabs the object beneath it, which is the green letter T. You'll know you have it selected when you see this green stripe right here and you could press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. Same thing over here. I'm going to get rid of the green letters. Get rid of that. And let me zoom out. And as you can see, we have finished. We have created our isometric text that looks like it has been carved into the surface of uh, what it's sitting on. So that's how you can go about creating that with Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.